Hi everyone, this is my chemistry channel. In previous video lecture, we discussed about some poisoning effects of carbon monoxide and cyanide ligands in hemoglobin. So, when these ligands are introduced in this hemoglobin, which leads to the severe poisoning and the victim can go to death. Okay. And also we discussed about genetic defects such as sickle cell anemia and methemoglobin in detail. And in this video lecture, we are going to discuss about some non emi proteins that are used to store oxygen and transport the oxygen in the marine species. Okay. So, let us go into the topic. First, non emi proteins. So, non emi proteins are from the name itself, we can say that the protein does not contain the heme prosthetic group. Okay. So, Examples for this non-AME protein, first one is hemerythrin and second one is hemocyanin. Okay. So first we will see one by one. First I take hemerythrin. We will the structure, we will see the structure and the biological role of hemerythrin. Okay. And this is hemerythrin is a Oxygen storage and transport protein in marine invertebrates. So it's usually found in the marine invertebrates which used to store oxygen and transport. Okay, and it is a type of uh, protein. Okay. And if you see the molecular mass of this protein will come under 1,88,000. As like hemoglobin, this emerythrin contains subunits. Nearly it contains 8 subunits in the protein structure. So, 8 subunits are contained along with 130 amino acids. So, 8 subunits are contains along with 130 amino acids units. So, in emerythrin, each subunit consists of each subunit consists of two Fe2 plus ions in its active site. 2 Fe2 plus ions in its active site. So, as like hemoglobin, so this emerythrin, because it also contains subunits, so these subunits are connected by the some polypeptide linkages. As like hemoglobin, this emerythrin does not have cooperative binding between the subunits to bind the dioxygen. So, each subunits are independent. So, this subunits does not have cooperative binding between this. Okay. So, it does not contain any salt bridge linkages. Just like hemoglobin. Okay. So, each sub subunit consists of two ion atoms in its active sites. So, along with this, it does not contain bore effect. So, no bore effect observed in hemerythrin. So, no bore effect observed in hemerythrin. Okay. And if you see the structure of this hemerythrin, first we will write the deoxy form. So, each ion atom is coordinated to histidine of nitrogen. So, the ion atom is coordinated to the imidazole ring of the nitrogen atom which is from histidine unit. Okay. So first, I will draw the structure.
two act as you said two active ion atoms are in the structure And this is the deoxy form of embryothene. Okay. So initially the structure has two active sites. So it is the one of the subunit in the embryothene. So this one of the subunit has two ion atoms in this active center. So this one ion atom and the second ion atom. The first ion atom which is coordinated octahedrally because it has six coordination. See this ion atom has three nitrogen bonded with the three nitrogen donors from this imidazole ring of the histidine residue. Okay, and the fourth to fifth binding, if you see the fourth and fifth binding, it's uh, linked to the carboxyl group of the gluten and aspartate. Okay, and both ion atoms are connected by this gluten and aspartate linkages. So and another ion atom, second ion atom is connected with the two histidine residues in, instead of three. And there's another coordination that is the two ion atoms are coupled antiferromagnetically with hydroxyl groups. So either it can coordinate with hydroxyl or water. Okay, so probably hydroxyl groups or always are also peroxyl groups. Okay, so usually this deoxyamethylene. Uh, antiferromagnetically, the two ions are coupled antiferromagnetically with the hydroxy groups. Okay. So here, yeah, the one of the ion atoms was in the six coordination site, and the other ion atoms were in the having five coordination site. So both ion atoms are in the plus two state. So one of the ion atoms was in the distorted environment, octahedral environment. So the in MD3, the oxygen binding was in the ratio of 2 is to 1. 2 is to 1. So in embryothene, each subunit sub binds only 1 oxygen. So each subunit of embryothene picks up one, only 1 oxygen from the species. Okay. So this deoxyformus, which was ion, was in the plus 2 state and it was paramagnetic. So this ion atom was in the ice pink state. So in M3, oxygen binding ratio in M3 is 2 is to 1. So when it picks up oxygen, it forms And this is oxyform. So when we, the deoxyform of everything binds oxygen, so the proton is released and transfer shifted to the oxygen in between the oxygen and forms the peroxide bridge. Okay. So this two ion atoms are coupled antiferromagnetically by this oxygen. Okay. So now this ion atom was in the plus three state. So both ion atoms was in the plus 3 state in oxy form. So now this ion atom was in the 
diamagnetic in nature diamagnetic nature and it is a reddish violet color it's a dark color it is reddish violet color so it's a marine this is everything found in the marine invertebrates okay so there are two ion environment in the embryo so one was in the six coordination site and another ion atom was in the distorted octahedral environment okay so as soon as it speaks oxygen it converted into perfect octahedral arrangement which is a reddish violet color okay so this is about embryothene so in embryothene as like hemoglobin it does not contain cooperative effect as well as no bore effects so it does not depends upon the ph of the species okay and next we will see the another non heme protein hemocyanin so from the name itself it, uh, it means uh, this hemocyanin may contain both heme group as well as cyanide group so it not like that so it's a, as i told you already it's a non heme proteins it does not contain any hemoglobin and cyanide group in the structure so the name implies the color of the species color of the blood sorry color of the blood so the hemocyanin pigment which gives the blue color to the blood of the marine species so this hemocyanin mainly found in the marine invertebrates such as mollusca the species mollusca come under the snails squid and the arthropoda arthropods which is crabs shrimps and lobsters so this species or marine species having uh, the blue color blit okay so in next you will see the structure of this hemocyanin so as like mp3 the hemocyanin contains several subunits in its protein structure several subunits in the protein structure and if you see the molecular weight of the hemocyanin it, it lies between 50000 to 75000 okay and if you see the structure of this here the hemocyanin as the active site two copper atoms so it's a non heme protein instead of ion atoms here the two copper atoms are in the active site so let's see the structure of the two copper atoms so the one copper atom is coordinated to the nitrogen of the imidazole ring of the three histidine residues Okay, so another copper atom also coordinated to the three nitrogen from imidazole ring of the histidine residues. So now there is a big cavity between this copper. So both the copper atoms was in the plus one oxidation state. So here there is a big cavity between this copper atoms. Okay, and this is called deoxy form of hemocyanin so if you see the distance between this copper it's nearly come 460 pu okay so so the cavity between this copper and copper is 460 pu okay so when it takes oxygen from the lungs of the marine species marine even dipates So the both the copper atoms are connected antiferromagnetically by the oxygen atom. Okay, and this is oxy form, and this is diamagnetic, and this deoxy form is diamagnetic, and it is a colorless. and this oxy form is a blue color 
and paramagnetic. So this blue color is due to the ligand to metal charge transfer between the oxygen and copper. Okay. So here yeah, the two copper atoms was in the plus two oxidation state. So the two copper atoms uh, pick up this oxygen and form the mu oxo bridge. So peroxide bridge. So peroxide bridge between these two copper atoms which bring the copper atoms near to each other. So now the distance between the two copper atoms get reduced by 350 P. Okay. So the deoxy is diamagnetic which is colorless and it takes the oxygen from the to the active site. It leads to the oxy form which is the copper get oxidized by this oxygen. Now this oxygen get reduced by this reaction. So the oxygen get reduced to peroxide and the copper get oxidized from plus 1 to plus 2 state. So in this reaction copper 1 to copper 2 plus. Okay, oxygen get reduced. Okay, So this blue color of this oxy form is due to the ligand metal charge transfer between the oxygen and Okay, and this is about the hemocyanin. And thanks for watching my video. And please like, comment, share my videos. Please watch my videos till the end of the video. Thanks to watching.